Why, hello there. Are you here to listen to a scary story? Perhaps you just happen to stumble upon my channel. Well, my name is Danny Dreadful, and that's what I do here. I tell creepypasta, classic horror, and sometimes I even sprinkle in some true paranormal. If that all sounds good to you, then why not stay and hit that subscribe button? If you're already subscribed, well then, welcome back, my beautiful creepy people. Tonight's story is about a demon and a nun. Well, I don't want to give too much away. <laughs> so, without further ado, grab your blanket, grab your whiskey, wine, coffee, or water, whichever you prefer, and let's get into tonight's tale. Tonight's story is called Ansitif and the Nun by Ernest Acosta. A demon's most joyed moment is when they collect a soul from a pure-hearted human who has complete faith. It was 1966. The nuns of a university were gathering outside for the yearly photo. Among them was Sister Mary, who wasn't feeling well. After the pictures were taken, they mingled outside and talked for a while. Sister Mary asked if someone could help her walk to her room since she was feeling dizzy. Once she arrived at her room, she took her medication and took a nap. It was just after 9 p.m. when she woke up. She sat up in her bed and drank a glass of water. She then noticed a creaking noise coming from the corner of her room near a wooden rocking chair. The room was dark and Sister Mary didn't have the best eyesight, but she noticed someone sitting in the chair. Before she asked who was there, the person sitting in the chair spoke. You are without fear, even at the sight of me here. Sister Mary drank from her glass of water again, then set it on the night table next to her bed. I do not fear anything other than the good Lord. You waste your time coming here. Sister Mary started coughing while reaching for her glass of water for another drink. The thing in the corner spoke. You're not well. Let me heal you. Sister Mary got out of bed to turn the lights on so she can reveal whatever was in her room. She flicked the switch, but the lights stayed off. She began to cough and fell back to the bed so she could regain herself. That cough sounds horrid. Is it painful? Do you remember what it's like not to struggle to breathe, to walk or even sleep without struggle? Imagine a life without pain, struggles, or worries. Let me give this to you. Sister Mary grew angry as she tried to walk out of the room. The door would not open, and she finally had enough. You waste your time. I dedicate my life to the good Lord. Now leave, Sister Mary shouted. Dedicate your life to him, yet this is how he treats you? You devote so much time to him, yet he does not praise you? Sister Mary walks up to the chair that the thing sits in. She stands before it and points her finger at it while telling it, You will leave. You have no place here. You have no power here or over me. Now leave. The thing on the chair chuckled and then responded, <laughs> I have whatever power you allow me to have. The door, the lights. How does one do this with no power? I will leave you be. For tonight, I will return tomorrow night to offer you another chance to let me help you. I am confident you will allow it. Deny my help, and someone here will lose their life. Keep your faith at someone else's expense. Sister Mary turned to where that thing was sitting, but it was gone. The next day, while Sister Mary was eating lunch, she heard a commotion coming from one of the hallways. She went to see what was happening and found the janitor, Jack, laying on the floor. They called the paramedics, but it appeared he had a massive heart attack and died instantly. Sister Mary leaned over him and said a prayer. After they came back and took his body away, Sister Mary went to sit at her favorite spot. Outside the dorm area, there was a big fountain with angel statues. Sister Mary enjoyed sitting near it, listening to the sound of the water 
along with all the other natural sounds from being outside. In the distance, she thought she saw Jack. He was standing by a tree, just staring at her. She stood up and began to cough. She tried walking closer to see, but her cough was not allowing it. She looked again, and Jack was no longer there. Later that night, after she had checked on the dorm area to make sure all the students were okay, she returned to her room. When she walked in, her lights didn't work again. She knew what this meant already. He was here. Good evening, Sister Mary. Jack says hi. Sister Mary turns to where she heard the voice. She grew angry as she responded, Taking a life? Is this some game to you? The thing in the corner of the room let out a laugh, then informed her that it was her own fault, that she caused Jack to lose his life. Let me introduce myself. I am N.C. Tiff. Let me help you. Let me cure your sickness. Deny me and another life will be taken. And so you know I am not blowing smoke. I will tell you exactly who will die if you deny me. Sister Mary shook her head and walked towards her window. She stood there looking out while kissing her rosary. Leave. You will not test my faith. <laughs> I will not fall into your games. Sister Mary responded while coughing. Aunt Cetif then came close to her and whispered in her ear, mm, That cough sounds horrid. I will see you tomorrow. Professor Miles, he just started here. Very young. Wife Laura and three kids. Miles, Jennifer, and Michael. I'm sure they will miss their father very much. Sister Mary turned around furiously, but Ansitif was gone. A knock on Sister Mary's door broke the silence. She slowly went to answer it. It was a student named Melissa. Melissa was a daughter of a student that Sister Mary taught. She was loved and considered part of their family. Sister Mary, I know it's late, but I wanted to tell you that the exam you helped me study for, I passed it. I owe you so much. They hugged and sat down. Melissa noticed there was something wrong, but Sister Mary would not talk about it. Melissa asked if Sister Mary would meet with her the next day to help her study more on some of her religion courses. After some small talk, Melissa left so that Sister Mary could rest. In the morning, Sister Mary woke to the sound of crying and screams. She walked out to the hall to see what was going on. Students were standing around, talking amongst themselves while pointing and looking in the same direction. In front of the chapel, they found Professor Miles' body hanging from a noose. He hung himself with a note in his hand. It read, Your faith did this. Sister Mary read the note and wasn't sure what to do. She began to question if this is truly her doing. Later, after they took Professor Miles' body, his family was there, and she saw how heartbroken they were. She asked herself, Is it right to keep her faith at the cost of that family's loss? She told herself that it is all that thing's doing, and none of this is her fault. The next day, Sister Mary was sitting outside when Melissa came and sat next to her. Melissa hugged her as usual, and asked how she was feeling. Sister Mary tried to say she was feeling fine, but her coughing and troubled breathing said otherwise. Melissa was very quiet the entire time, which led Sister Mary to believe something was wrong. Melissa assured her that everything was okay. Sister Mary began coughing again. It sounded worse than before. Melissa just sat there and looked at her, didn't even move a finger. Sister Mary finally stopped coughing, and then Melissa said to her, That cough sounds horrid. You're ill. Let me help you. Sister Mary looked at her in shock. She asked her to repeat what she said, since it sounded just like what Aunt Cetif had said to her. Melissa spoke again. You heard me correctly, Sister Mary. I'm asking you again. Let me help you. 
You saw what happened to Professor Miles. Deny me again, and I don't need to tell you whose life is next. Sister Mary started to say a prayer while closing her eyes. Melissa interrupted her prayer. So be it. Keep your faith. Keep your sickness. Just know that it's this girl's life in your hands. Sister Mary shook her head. Melissa is a girl of faith, a pure-hearted girl, loved by so many, and she loves others greatly. Her soul is far too great for your kind. Now leave and never disturb us or anyone again. Melissa smiled at her, then looked around as if she had some type of backup plan as she spoke. Can you look into her mother's eyes, the very student you watch grow, the very one who loved you like her own mother? Can you look her in the eyes and explain to her why her daughter is not only dead, but her soul is damned for all eternity? Explain to her mother that she will lose her daughter and never see her again in this life or the after, all because you so selfishly chose to keep your faith. Sister Mary closed her eyes. She kissed her rosary and started to pray as she started to cough again. Melissa smirked as she said, I will ask you once more. Let me help you. Sister Mary stopped saying her prayer and was silent. She started to cry as she whispered to herself, Forgive me, Lord. Sister Mary started to cough uncontrollably as she tried to muster up words. I can't, <laughs> I can't let you harm her or damn her soul. She is a beautiful person and she doesn't deserve that. I will sacrifice my own eternity for hers. I accept. Melissa smiled, then stood up and looked at Sister Mary. Your cough is gone. Your health is fine now. But your soul is ours. Sister Mary sat there in silence, thinking about what she had done, assuring herself that it was the right thing to do. She heard the voice of Ansitif, but inside her own head, You will live long, but your soul is now ours, and until the day comes for us to collect, I will be sure to make your life a living hell. Sister Mary was crying and questioned herself. What have I done?